What in the world is a concept? It turns out that in the last 3,000 years, nobody has defined what a concept is. They never define what an object is. They never define what a concept is. And that's part of the problem today. You know, the way we look at it, every word in the dictionary can be divided or, or fit under one of these two categories. Either it's an object or it's a concept. What is an object? An object is that which has shape. What is a concept? It's a word that uh, embodies or uh, includes in some way, uh, refers to two objects. So we can say that um, an object is to one what concept is to two. That's more or less our, our argument today. But before we can get there, we have to go back all the way 2,500 years to the days of Mr. Plato. Okay? And Mr. Plato, uh, not, not the first one, by the way, okay, but, uh, apparently it goes even be before him, uh, saying that Pythagoras was really the guy who came up with it. We need to figure out what philosophy is. And the reason we need to go back to philosophy, we need to know what uh, philosophy deals with concepts. Like physics deals with objects, the bread and butter, bread and butter of philosophy is the concept. And so uh, philosophy and concepts are like, you know, uh, love and marriage. You know, they go together like a horse and carriage. That's more or less the situation there. So here we have Mr. Plato, and this is uh, his notion. This comes out of his book six, uh, The Republic. Okay? It says, the nature of the philosopher has to be ascertained. Obviously, he's right. Now, we have to start out by figuring out what is philosophy about? What is a philosopher? Okay? And so he says, philosophical minds always love knowledge. You know, what does philosophy mean? Phil a love of wisdom? Well, love of knowledge, love of wisdom, that's more or less the notion they had. It says, love knowledge of a sort which shows them the eternal nature not varying from generation and corruption. Why corruption? Because you've got to be dealing with philosophy in, in the context of politics. That's why. They will never intentionally receive into their mind falsehood, okay? And falsehood, again, is an opinion, which is their detestation, and they will love the truth. Truth, what is truth? Opinion, that's what truth is. What is truth to you is a lie to me. Is there anything more akin to wisdom than truth? So you can see he, he goes this into this issue of truth, and again, uh, that's got to do a lot with opinion. If it's got to do with opinion, it's got very little to do with science. It's got to do more with religion. Opinion is religion. Your, you know, what your opinion is, we, we care very little about in science. Science only deals with objective, not fact, but with objective explanation so that you understand, in the case of physics, physical interpretations, okay, in the case of philosophy, so that you can understand reasons and purposes, in other words, behavior, right? And now we can fit them under science, which is uh, explanation, uh, rational explanation, okay? Okay, so, so what happened? Here we have uh, another fellow, his name was Aristotle, and we have Plato versus Aristotle. You can see the differences they had uh, regarding what philosophy is or what a philosopher is all about, okay? And here we have the differences between them. We have Plato's philosophy, okay? And as the philosophy of Plato is more theoretical and abstract in nature, whereas the Aristotle philosophy is uh, more practical and experimental in nature, even though everybody today complains that Good old Aristotle did not do experiments, okay? But anyways, here we have uh, Plato's uh, ultimate happen happiness as dependent upon society. Well, uh, Aristotle said dependent upon the individual, okay? So we have uh, uh, one person in, in a society and one person all alone. That's essentially what was the difference between Plato and Aristotle. And then uh, Plato believed that man's ultimate goal was becoming one with the universe. And I think that came from the way back east. Okay, and uh, Aristotle instead said, ultimate goal was achieving excellence and becoming a master. Wisdom is the most important virtue and the foundation of all good and embodied all virtues. virtues. And that was uh, Plato. And instead, uh, Aristotle said, wisdom is virtuous goal one could achieve with effort and diligence. And it was not a virtue that appeared automatically, nor was it a unification of other virtues. Then you have the soul, the famous soul. You know, that's uh, more or less where we got these ideas in the Western world. Okay? Soul is the guide to body and mind. It is further divided, the soul, into three uh, parts, which are emotion, desire, and reason. Whereas Aristotle said, soul is the form of a living thing and was inseparable from the body. Okay? So we have a difference between these two, but what are the, these two folks talking about? This is what their, their notion of philosophy was. And... Uh, you know, I'm saying none of that has anything at all to do with philosophy. 
And these are the two folks that gave a kickstart to philosophy in the Western world that we live with even to this day. So when you have a philosopher out there, you know, uh, maybe you get to the uh, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. What do they talk about? Well, they talk about this kind of philosophy, what they call philosophy. When you go into it, you find that it's all opinion. It's all recommendations. They talk about what you should believe in, uh, how a government should be run, whether you should believe in a certain religion, etc., etc. They, they do recommendations. That's all they do. Or how you should be happy. Is that what philosophy is all about? I mean, uh, uh, think about it for a second. You know, I can give you my recommendations of how to be happy, uh, how a government should be run, whether you should believe in God or not. Uh, that's my philosophy. And you probably have a different philosophy, a different way of thinking. Are we saying that there are 8 billion philosophers on planet Earth, everybody with his own way of thinking? Is that what philosophy is all about? If that's true, then how can we distinguish Mr. Plato or Mr. Aristotle from any of us? Why do we say that they are philosophers? I mean, we're all philosophers for that matter under that definition or under that, under that notion of philosophy. So this is what's nonsense about the notion we have of philosophy that we inherited from the Greeks. Okay? What is wisdom? Well, here you have a little definition that we found today. Wisdom, the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Uh, what's good judgment? Is it uh, some kind of difference uh, with bad judgment? I mean, what's good for you, it's bad for me, maybe. I mean, all these are opinions. None of this has anything to do with anything solid that we can include under science. Or that, you know, if it's not objective, who cares about this notion of philosophy? When you say you study philosophy at the university, what the hell are you studying? Are you studying opinions? Are you studying recommendations? Uh, how to do politics? How, do you do, how, how to do religion? Is that what philosophy is about? Hopefully philosophy is something a little more uh, objective, you know, and not so opinionated. Okay. Here we have um, the philosophy. This is how this word philosophy has developed even to today. Here we have it. Philosophy, the study of the fundamental nature of knowledge. Okay, is that, is that what philosophy is? Knowledge? What is knowledge? Well, there you see uh, the equal sign. Knowledge is equal to belief. That's what knowledge is. When you know something, you believe it. And in fact, Mr. Plato uh, essentially summarized it as justified true what? Belief. That's what knowledge is. Knowledge is belief. We don't deal with knowledge or belief in science. We deal with explanations, objective explanations. So there you see it. The study of fundamental nature of knowledge, reality, and existence. Absolutely not, because philosophy doesn't deal with existence. Philosophy uh, deals with uh, behaviors, and existence is the exclusive province of physics. Physics is the science of existence. Physics only studies. You can say, I, I don't like the word study. I'll say that physics only attempts to explain what exists out there and how it works. And only uh, deals with existence. It says, especially when considered as an academic discipline. Philosophy, this comes from the Wikipedia, the study of general and fundamental questions, such as those about existence, reason, knowledge, values, mind, and language. Again, same nonsense. What is existence? The ability of an entity to interact with reality. It refers to the ontological property of being. What is existence? What is reality? What is being? They're all synonyms. If you look these words up, reality uh, is defined in terms of being and existence. Being is defined in terms of reality and existence. And existence is defined in terms of reality and being. They're all the same words. We haven't learned anything because all of these are synonyms. What is knowledge? Belief. Also a synonym. So, so far we know nothing of what uh, knowledge is or what existence is. To say that philosophy studies existence is... is uh, useless if you're not going to define what existence is. And nobody has ever done that in the last 2,000 years. Now here you have our version, okay? Science, what is it? Rational explanations. If you're going to do physics, rational explanations of phenomena. If you're going to do philosophy, rational explanations of what? Behaviors. Okay, so physics deals with causes and mechanisms. Philosophy deals with reasons and purpose. Uh, the bread and butter of physics is the object. The bread and butter of philosophy is the concept, primarily, okay? That's how we divide it. Okay, so as a result of uh, Mr. Plato and his uh, co-religionaries, the Greeks, uh, these are the branches of philosophy that we ended up with today, okay? You have aesthetics, ethics, epistemology, metaphysics, okay? Logic, mind and language, philosophy of science, political philosophy, philosophy of religion. What is all this? I mean, this, this has nothing to do with philosophy. All this has to do with opinion, and opinion is not a branch of science. Opinion is a branch of religion. Okay? So we separate religion 
from science, and that's what we propose as a new version of science in this channel. You don't have to believe us. You take it for what it, what it was worth to you, okay? That's the way we look at it. We don't care if everybody in the vo world votes for it or against it. It doesn't matter one yoda, okay? Okay, and uh, finally, here we have, this is the methodology we ended up with today. It's the choice of methodology is guided by epistemological considerations about what constitutes philosophical evidence, how much support it offers, and how to acquire it. And these are the, uh, what you see. You can see, I want you to uh, focus on what these people are saying here. You will see that they're all opinions. Methodolo methodological skepticism. What is skepticism? It means you doubt something. What is that? That means opinion is a prominent method of philosophy using systematic doubt, what is doubt, opinion, to determine which principles of philosophies, uh, philosophy are indubitable. What is indubitable? Opinion. <laughs> common sense, another method, right, starts with commonly accepted beliefs. What is belief? Belief. That's what it is, just opinion, which it often employs in a negative sense to criticize philosophical theories that are too far removed from how the average person sees the issue. Again, opinion. That's all it is. Various methods in philosophy give particular importance to intuitions, non-inferential non impressions about the correctness. Correctness, what is correct? Opinion of specific claims or general principles. These anticipated consequences can then be used to confirm or refute. What is confirm or refute? Opinion, philosophical theories. Pragmatists stress what? The significance of concrete practical consequences for assessing whether a philosophical theory is what? True or false? What is true or false? Opinion. All of this has to do with opinion, all this methodology that they have today. So no, philosophy, if you study uh, philosophy at the university level, uh, all you're studying is opinion, recommendations, uh, beliefs. That's got nothing to do with uh, objectivity, first of all, it's all subjective. And if it's not objective, I don't know how you can fit that within science. Hopefully science is objective so that it applies to everyone on the planet a Chinese, an American, a Russian, a South American, an African, and a European, they should all reach the same conclusion as far as if, if it's objective. Now, if it's subjective, well, everybody, you got 8 billion opinions. So again, philosophy uh, is a big problem because it has never been defined. And what is interesting, if you go to Stanford Encyclopedia of what? Of philosophy, the only word you won't find uh, that's not defined is the word philosophy. You would think that a, uh, an encyclopedia of philosophy, the first word they define is philosophy. So we know what the subject matter is. We need to know what the discipline known as philosophy represents or what it stands for. We don't. Not if you go to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, which is probably the number one um, reference material out there in the internet. Okay, so how do we relate this to the word concept now? We have philosophy. We don't know what philosophy is. Turns out the bread and butter of philosophy is the concept. Let's find out if we do any better <laughs> with the concept. Here we go. Okay, here's the... Um, uh, summary that uh, good old Plato had, okay, we start with him again, okay, and this is it, it says, uh, this is just a summary, okay, there is a realm of ideas or forms which exist independently of the thinker, it is the ideas which distinguish mere opinion from knowledge, okay, so he thought there was a difference there, okay, material things are transient and liable to contrary properties, material things can only be the objects of opinion. I don't know how he ended up with that, but that's how he concluded. On the other hand, he says ideas, in other words, the forms that he was talking about, ideas are unchanging. Real knowledge can only be had of unchanging ideas. Okay, so he thought that ideas were eternal, that those were the ones that maybe the gods knew about. And all we could do was relate to the objects that we could see or touch, which is kind of interesting, you know, because, again, he was a little more abstract than good old Aristotle. Okay, so um, because of Mr. Uh, Plato, how did we end up today with this notion of the concept? What is a concept? What the hell is that? And here we have a, uh, more or less the, what, what the notions we have today. Concepts are defined as abstract ideas. Take a hold of that word idea. I'm going to get back to that. They are understood to be the fundamental building blocks of the concept behind principles, thoughts, and beliefs. <laughs> We're back to belief, to opinion. In contemporary philosophy, there are at least three prevailing ways to understand what a concept is. Oh, goody, goody. I'm, I'm rubbing my hands. I want to see what this is all about. First one, mental representations, entities that exist in the mind. And they call it mental objects. So we have a mental object, and that's called a mental representation of whatever, and they think that that's a concept. They equate it with a concept. What's the second one? Abilities. Peculiar to cognitive agents. In other words, what? Mental states. 
It means that if you shoot up, you know, you have a mental state, <laughs> and that's an idea which is a concept. And then you have the last one, abstract objects. So they think again, you have mental objects and now you have abstract objects as opposed to mental objects and mental states. Okay, so we have mental representations, which are the mental objects. We have the abilities and we have the abstract objects. Those are what they consider, the, the, the set of those three, right, are what they consider concepts. Things like numbers, sets, and propositions are what? Abstract objects. They call them objects. Who calls them like that? The mathematicians. Those are the ones who turn numbers into objects and sets and whatever, and they, they talk about objects. No, they're not objects. You have to define the word object before you can use it in a sentence like they did there. And so <clears throat> what does the word abstract mean? Because they're talking about abstract objects. Abstract, thought of part, apart from concrete realities, specific objects, or actual instances. So what does abstract mean? It's the opposite of concrete. What is concrete? The opposite of abstract. <laughs> we don't know what abstract or concrete are, but they are antonyms, and that's how they're defined. So again, an antonym is not a definition. It's a circular definition. The fact that you say that a cat is not a dog or not a horse, that does not mean that you understand what a cat is. Okay, yeah, a cat is not a tree, not a house, not a rock. I mean, you can go forever. So you cannot define a cat in terms of a negative. And that's called an antonym, and an antonym is a circular definition. So we don't know what an abstract is, so we don't know what an abstract object is, because we don't know what an object is, and all that is what a concept is. You got it? I hope you, you understood it, okay? And here is the word idea, which I asked you to retain for a second. Here it is. Idea. Any conception. Conception? I thought a concept was an idea. Now an idea is a conception. Great. Any conception existing in the mind as a result of mental understanding, awareness, or activity. Okay, now we continue here. and says a little description here. Ideas are the result of thought. No kidding. Ideas can also be mental representational images of some object. Absolutely not. That's not an idea. Thought, a product of thinking, idea, or notion. What are we talking about? We're talking about synonyms. Conception, what is a conception? A notion, idea, concept. What is a notion? Vague or imperfect conception, idea, or some, of something. So we have synonyms. We, we don't have a definition for any of these words. All we're doing is running around in circles, just using synonyms to define, supposedly define uh, other words. And yeah, at the end of the story, people just say, well, you know, uh, words require more words, require more words, and all those words need to be defined, so we don't know how to define any word in the dictionary. Right. Not in science. That's only in mathematics, not in science. In science, we are able to define the key words that form the foundations of physics. Okay, And one of those is not the concept. We do not move concepts around. We define it only to distinguish it from objects. What is an object? An object is that which has shape. What is a concept? Well, you can say um, uh, just vaguely you could, or very like rule of thumb, you can say that a concept is that which doesn't have shape. But that's not the definition. The formal definition is an object is a word that embodies uh, or includes two objects. You need, to you need two objects to define a concept, meaning that you need to define the word object before you define the word concept. A concept is a relation between two uh, objects. Okay, And here's a pictorial representation of that. Let me put it up here. Okay, There you have it. Object, that which has shape. What is concept? A word that invokes or embodies two objects. Here you have the first object, a cat, okay? Now, if you're gonna talk about a concept such as distance, well, hopefully you need two objects. And there you see a cat and a dog, okay? Now you can talk about distance. You can talk about direction. I mean, try to define, try to imagine direction without two objects or two endpoints, A and B, okay? And you can go on and on. I'm telling you the definition of the word concept is that you need two objects. No other way of doing it. Okay, so what is a concept? Two objects, you can say, or you can say that the, uh, an object is to one what a concept is to two. That's a, just a neat way of memorizing that. So uh, now you know what a concept is, and now, yeah, you can say that philosophy is a um, discipline that deals primarily with concepts, okay? whereas physics deals primarily with objects. Now we can separate the two, and since both involve explanations, in one case explanations of physical mechanism, the other one an explanation of behaviors, purposes, and reasons, right? Now we can fit them under science, which is what? A rational explanation. If it's irrational, it doesn't even belong to science to begin with.